This NFL draft and UFC 261 edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at WYNNBet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better than Vegas is your home to free daily video picks from SGPN. It's like YouTube for sports gambling. Make sure to subscribe to our profile at sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Roman. Roman is the straightforward way to take care of your ED. Get Roman.com slash SGP for 15%, $15 off your first month. That's get Roman.com slash SGP. We're also doing a $500 FCS playoff bracket challenge that is completely free. Just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash FCS. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash FCS. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Uh, I mean, bonus podcast, Sean. Bonus content. Alert bonus the authorities. Ka-ching. Alert the media. Some of us are doing work. Yeah, putting in the shifts, cranking out the content. I mean, the draft is right around the uh, you know right around the corner. We're only what seven days now as we tape this to our live NFL draft mega simulcast game cast special presentation. It's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. Three hours of just drinking Coors light and talking about the NFL. It made doesn't me, get any better. Made me think Sean, we got to start working more during stuff so I can be working. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm working. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I, Thursday night. I got a long night, long night. Probably going to, you know, probably going to show up late. Maybe put the kids away. Maybe going to need to sleep in a little <laughs> bit on Friday morning. Put the kids to bed. Yeah, late start Friday morning. But uh, counting down to the draft, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, draft. And then uh, Jeff Fox from the mm. MMA Gambling Podcast will join us talking UFC 261. That's going to be, uh, I mean, again, we hit up Jeff said, "What is? What are the big fights? What are the big pay per views? You got to come on our feed and hype yeah. up the MMA Gambling Podcast well, feed." He said, "UFC 261. That's the one." So. Newly minted, Sean. Newly minted Did, feed. Yes. It, I, if you haven't seen the artwork, not much of an artiste myself. Gets me excited. One of the uh, it, the artwork gets me excited. One of the one of the cooler logos we got. Uh, oh no! And of course, in our uh, never-ending effort to not uh, earn money as a network and to give it all away to the fans, we're giving away five hundred dollars in the FCS bracket challenge. So if you've been hesitant to step on the field for the FCS uh, college football season, the playoffs is the perfect time to do it. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash f. CS sports gambling podcast.com slash FCS sign up, get your bracket going. And uh, yeah, let's talk some F C S football. No, man. Whenever we say football, I just have to blast it. Have to hear the NFL song. Going to be playing it all week long. Again, as we count things down, of course, this episode, all the episodes on the sports gambling podcast network presented by our good buddies over at win bet. That's right. You want to win big? Well, you got to head over to wynnbet.com. Sign up there and get that risk free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. You can't get the details over at winbet.com. They got it all. The parlay boost, my personal favorite. Again, Las Vegas comes to you. The excitement of Las Vegas in the palm of your hand. So easy. If you can't make it to Las Vegas, don't worry. Las Vegas comes to you in the form of the WinBet app. Get. You listen to this podcast. You love betting on sports. You also love convenience. You also love great odds. You also love parlay boosts. You can get it all over at winbet.com. Kramer, before we get into our NFL draft takes, this uh, clip kind of went viral, and it was the uh, Portland State college basketball coach. His introductory press conference felt like we had to hit on it. I know this is the N- NFL draft UFC podcast, but sometimes when you hear some amazing coach uh, press conferences, you just got to talk about it. Sometimes you can turn grit into drip, and I, I'd welcome this guy to coach the drip squad <laughs> any anytime he'd like. Sean, by the way, uh, did you say his name? No, I didn't. It's uh, Jason Coburn. 
Jace, Jace, I'm sorry, Jace. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Kind of in the Kyler camp of names. Yeah, and he's a coach though, so a little bit older. Maybe showing kids it's okay to be called Jace. Jace Coburn, Portland State Vikings. The other thing is, is I'm hungry and passionate. I don't eat breakfast in the morning, so I can come to work hungry. So when I get to lunch, I'm hungry, and that's just the kind of person I am. I know my 2003 Chevy Tahoe's got a lot of play this week so far. But like, it doesn't have AC, and it doesn't have heat. And the reason I do that is so I can practice my mental toughness during the winter when it's cold, and I can practice my mental toughness during the, the summer when it's hot. That's the type of person I am. And that's when you just run through the brick wall. Well, Ryan, that's probably where you're th- you. But you know what the millennials are going to hear, Coach? <laughs> that's stupid. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know why his 2003 Tahoe was getting so much play prior to his announcement. Also, here's the thing. I think because that was the the no heat, no AC comment. Oh, okay. It was like he was coming in touted as the coach. Now, if this guy actually had working heat and AC, took it to the mechanic and said, "Remove that from my vehicle. (laughs) I want more mental toughness. I want more grit." Then I then I think this guy deserves to be commended. But <laughs> if he like me had a piece of shit vehicle for a long time, 1991 uh, Ford Escort station where I got all that thing was a beast until the gas tank exploded. Uh, that's a whole nother story. But the, uh, the Jetta that I had was a complete lemon. The window was broken. Part of it was my fault trying to repair it, but real piece of shit. And I just would drive around Los Angeles with a beach towel over the window. No AC heat was the only way the heat worked is if the engine was overheating, you cracked open a vent that really did bring me a lot of mental toughness, Ryan. But again, it was not a, it wasn't a mental toughness exercise that I chose to be a no, part that's of. That's not the good kind of mental, you know, I can't wait for the SGPN storytelling se- <laughs> series on Sean's horrible car luck. I really had it. Well, and then it all changed when I won $200,000 on <laughs> DraftKings and got an amazing 2019 uh, Jeep grand Cherokee altitude edition Kramer. All right, let's talk NFL draft. We've given out some props. We've done our mock yes, draft. Yes. Let's uh, let, why don't we crack open a Coors Light six pack for six refreshing takes on the NFL draft. Maybe uh, refreshing, I, like a that. refreshing take. It, we're casting a wide net as to what we can hit on. It can be hot takes or anti cold takes. is refreshing sometimes. Yeah. Ice cold takes to other people's hot yeah. takes. We let it pretty wide open. Just six things. Kramer, I'll let you kick things off. Crack open your first one. Historically a contrarian. Yes. I've made a lot of money in my life being a contrarian. FTP, fade the public. Happy to fade the public. When in doubt, go the other way. Zig when everyone's zagging. All I see on the me here's my theory. We've been just waiting so goddamn long to, as Dave Gettleman said, put our hands back <laughs> on people. You can finally touch people you this year. You can finally touch them. Wasn't he what didn't he have a quote last year that it's going to be tough cuz you can't get in the same room and get a good smell yeah, of that I mean uh, talk about a man with a consistent <laughs> mes- message something this well, we, this we gave, country needs more of Sean we, Yeah the messaging's all over the place but we gave uh Gettleman's messaging crystal clear <laughs> baby We gave we gave Rex Ryan a lot of crap for his obvious foot fetish and I feel like I feel like you know, Gettleman's a Jersey guy. He's not Gettleman, in the Gettleman has he's been fortunate as an NFL GM to live in this post King Shame era where none of this is raising the red flags or creating the jokes that other bygone eras I would have been big on. I feel like with the way this episode's already started, we might be bumping UFC at the end of it. I don't I don't know. Uh look, here's the first one. Everyone is talking about how everyone is gonna trade down. Yes. Uh, incessantly, I, you know. I get it. The more a lot of calls, we, we are moving closer and closer to a world where everyone is just a fantasy owner of their own team. We're going to do a fan base transactions. Why, why hire GMs when you can just crowdsource it, right? Like that's where we're headed. The, the, the convergence of the neural net, the fan neural network with the AI, with the, the front office, uh, but seriously, wh- why is it just recency or, or have we not had more trade discussions, more trading down opportunities, more teams that should trade up than ever before. I've a lot of, a lot of hype on what I'm about to say, but I don't think anyone trades down on draft night in the first 10 picks. Okay. I like it. Yeah, Let's walk I, through I, it. Jacksonville. We know where they're going to go. A yes. quarterback jets. 
We know where they're going to go. A quarterback, 49ers. We feel pretty certain they're going to go quarterback. Pick what kind of the draft starts with three. I think you and I both firmly uh, think we know where it's going, but pick four. Let's assume the odds on favorite thing has happened and we've had uh, the three quarterbacks, Mac Jones being the third one, go off the board. Top three. If you're the Falcons, I think one of two things happens here. You either realize that you're in, like you have a hometown quarterback option in Justin Fields uh, from not far away, or you do the smart thing and just take Kyle Pitts, a generational talent, just like Julio Jones, who people are going to be clamoring for. But why not take him yourself? Bengals. We know they're going to take a line. I mean, again, you can't not take a lineman. Your quarterback, just your franchise. I think. I think surgery. They go. Just let me keep going because sure. it's more of just like they could get destroyed if they're wrong and they trade back. And I think that's why teams don't often trade back from high profile positions because you're giving someone else the opportunity to be right in a big fucking way. And I think with Kyle Pitts, although I'm on the other side of the argument, you guys are right. He has the highest ceiling probably in the class. So do you really want to be the team that passed on him to trade down and grab some dude? No one knows about five years from now. Dolphins, they traded up for a reason. The buzz about them trading back is galaxy brain bullshit. They traded up for a reason. That reason is Jamar Chase. Mm. He will be I there. Think I think my mock draft has him going to the Bengals. Okay. Anyway, I, I think all of these picks, I, what I'm really laying out is the reason why this team is not trading. Because again, you have to a have a team that wants to trade up and give enough for that team to want to go down. And all of the theories have the teams trading out of the top ten, Sean. Yeah, and and that just seems like your drop off in talent is huge. So let me continue. Detroit Lions, are you 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 really think they're going to pass up an opportunity to take the top defensive player in a season where Dan Campbell has said? We're gonna change the identity. You're on this camp, right? You're on the idea that they're gonna take a defensive player. Well, and, and uh, a little just other stuff. They, they do have now Chris Spielman, who is like a hardcore old school football guy. He's not the GM, but he clearly has a presence in the and in the Detroit Lions organization. I was listening to Lombardi. He was the bringing that up. Hometown pass rusher, yeah, right up in Michigan. I, I mean, Quiddy Pay, Mika Parsons. Those are uh, okay. Uh, Micah Parsons. Micah Pan- Parsons. Panthers, someone, someone correct him. Got to get the offensive lineman. You can't pass on an opportunity to get one of the top linemen. Denver Broncos. I know everyone thinks they're going quarterback. If they get here and there's two quarterbacks sitting there, they might take one. They also might take a cornerback. They might do something to help that defense. They might. Elway might realize I need to get out of this a little bit. And part of that is because too many quarterbacks, <laughs> let's go a second year with this guy. His shoulder was fucked up all season. Maybe just maybe it's, it wasn't fully that drew lock sucks. Although I think we do. And then when you get to the Cowboys, I'm very surprised if they do anything, but take the cornerback. So again, I just got navigated the top 10 picks where no one trades back because again, if you're Atlanta and you want, you're going to trade back to 19. The Redskins are like who who's coming up that far and who wants to fall that far? The only working theory that makes sense to me is if you're the Falcons and you're like, we don't maybe getting some picks next year makes sense. Because maybe we, you know, we'll, we'll, but it's weird because you're kind of like tanking on this season already. Anyway, the hot take, not so hot take. I just don't think the trades are gonna be there. Okay. On, on draft night. I'm gonna caveat I, that on draft I, night. I think that. Well, again, I, I keep repeating this. Washington football team ends up with Trey Lance, so I think they may go up to seven or eight to get him in front of the Broncos. That I think is your biggest concern. But again, if you're let's play that game, if you're Detroit, but they might white knuckle it and and just wait it out because if if once he gets past Denver, then I think it's home free until until a Washington. If you're if you're Carolina or Detroit, it's again it's one thing if you're trading back four picks five where the giants or Eagles are. Yeah. It's another to say, you know what? I don't want any of these top tier guys because now if you go down to where the Redskins, the football team no, is, and, and now that you lay it out, I think Detroit is less likely to trade down, but I think Carolina is still that one because they gave up picks for Sam Darnold, maybe pick up some down. picks maybe. Well, but I mean, you're, you know, when we're talking about Detroit, 
the new era, the new addition, like they're going to want to put a stamp on the, on the franchise. And you do that with the top 10 pick. So Carolina, I think is the only ch- maybe exception there, but I think you're right about all the rest. And I believe the Detroit GM came from the ran from, from Les Snead, the camp of, if you like a player, go fucking get the player. Don't con- constantly trade back for future assets that you may or may not need. I Yeah. So anyway, that's the, t- I think, I think we're going to want to see a lot of trades. I think there could be a shitload of trades in like the last seven picks of the draft teams coming back up first round. Yeah. Sorry of the first round, because there's going to be a, a tremendous amount of receivers. I think that's what the conversation is going to kind of like move to is how many good fucking receivers we're going to have at the top of the second round. So maybe we'll see teams coming in to grab those guys at the end of the first round. But well, and, and I've been on record. The Eagles are going to trade up at some point. They have 11 picks. They're yeah. not going to draft 11 guys. And this draft in particular, because of the weird, uh, you know, some, some schools getting an extra, some players get an extra year of eligibility, whatever. This is kind of like a thinner draft class overall. And again, limited tape, limited game. Like these picks this year aren't seen as valuable as picks next year. All right. My first refreshing take, I'm going to say it going to go out on a limb, Ryan, Trevor Lawrence will not be the best quarterback in this class. Mm. Now, How, what, what are we boxing this? How are we defining this? Well, I'm, I, I like to go, I'm a QB playoff wins guy. That to me matters playoff wins, QB wins. Uh, you know, I, I think we'll have an idea that he's not the guy in five years from now. Now, again, hedging my bets. Cause uh, maybe he balls out and completely blows everyone out of the way. But I, I just, Zach Wilson again, Joe Theismann, really, he laid it out for us. Again, we were on, you know, Zach Wilson at minus 150, will be the second pick, gave that out months ago. And now you can't get that less than like minus 2,000. I'm just, I don't know, Trevor Lawrence, the Jaguars, some of these quotes about how he can live without football. The Urban Meyer effect, just well, the fact the it's in part. Jacksonville, you the don't fact know. that there's maybe a chance they end up in London. I just think the situation isn't going to be as clean as everyone wants it to be. Now, well, it's tough to look at his game and and specifically say like he does X, Y, or Z wrong. You know, you can nitpick some stuff in in film study, but it's just again, this is more my gut telling me. He's not the guy, and uh, we've it's seen, a really hot take because he seen, checks. He yeah, checks he checks all the boxes. the boxes, but to me, I, I don't know. Like Andrew Luck, a pure, uh, more pure prospect to me than Trevor Lawrence. There's just something Are about say, him because Andrew Luck is kind of regarded as one of like he's kind of a benchmark in terms of a a prospect. Like I can't quote unquote can't miss. Oops, we didn't realize he was gonna. Uh, lose interest in football and want a backpack in Europe, but can't miss prospect. I, I think here's the, the area where I think Trevor Lawrence checked the box too many times, and it's it's strangely is hurting him. Well, he's still going to be the first pick, but I think for the people that are bored about him and and kind of have this angle, which I think there are, you know, if you want to break down his footwork and accuracy, you can make a case for why. You know, I I don't know if he's going into the best situation to clean some of that stuff up, and, and that's the thing that that I think why I like the angle is Urban Meyer can fail, and we're yeah. going to be happy when he fails, and I think Urban Meyer failing can really affect uh, Trevor Lawrence. But here's the thing: the guy's gotten the reps at the highest com- competition level in college. He's not one of these like one season starters. Uh, again, this is this is just my gut rumbling telling me something is not going to be right with Trevor Lawrence. It, it's just You're saying this, no, his teammates didn't go to his birthday party. No, nah, I I just think, you know, he already got married. That's always a red flag. So, Wentz was downhill after he got married. Like, uh, I have nothing against marriage, but <laughs> like you really there's a I mean, I know we're the we're now when to come. we're now the old guys telling the young guy, if I could do it all over again, <laughs> test drive as many vehicles as possible. You know what I'm talking? I just, you know, you're you're about to be the number one pick of the draft, bro. Yeah, I, at a you're, minimum, you're selling Dogecoin when it hits one cent. Like, he, hold on, hodl a little bit, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, hodl, your bro. stock is only rising. What's your next one, Kramer? All right, so um, you know, kind of, I do think that the first round is going to be a little bit different than people think. Uh, I'm going to break it down. As I get to my point, three quarterbacks, two wide receivers, two linemen, one tight end, one quarterback and one linebacker or defensive lineman is what I think the first round will be. You'll notice. I only said three quarterbacks. Mm. I think we have a couple quarterbacks slide. I, 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 
I'm thinking it's going to be Fields and, and Trey Lance. Trey Lance, I think, gets really interesting, Sean. I almost made the hot take with the eleventh pick in the 2021 NFL draft. The Giants trade down with the New England Patriots, who take Trey Lance, mm. who can slot into an offense with Cam Newton quite slot. nicely. Slot. I think he might still be there at that point. I don't think Denver is going quarterback. So my hot take based on that multiple quarterbacks fall out of the top 10, but Justin Fields is the guy who gets the Aaron Rodgers treatment. Because as you've mentioned, Sean, you look at the teams once, if he slides past even the Patriots, like, are they really going to take a quarterback people who use the argument and say, look, the Patriots are going all in this year. They're spending all the free agency (laughs) money. So they're going to draft a rookie. That makes no fucking sense. Pa- Patriots are the hardest team uh, anyway, to wrap your head around as far as these mocks. I think s- something something smells about Justin Fields. Slow, long release. Something smells a little bit about Justin. Uh, again, there's there, there, there's a there's a handful of reasons to be concerned. He looks like a fun prospect. The the, the pro pro tape looked good, or the I, pro I mean, day I, tape looked good. Certainly that game against Clemson but, where he got injured and came back that was awesome. But again. You come, you just look at the schematics of the draft. And I, I think unless it's a team saying, fuck it, we got like uh, the, the, the inefficiency is I don't think the fifth quarterback should go in the 20. I think he goes into the twenties and I think maybe it's 19, 20 where it stops because those teams would be crushed. Like they would get killed if they, if it, yeah, maybe that's where I, the if, slide if, has to end. If Washington football teams on the clock and Justin Fields is there. I don't see how a bad experience with Dwayne Haskins, (laughs) the Ohio state thing. No. And I think it's real. I mean, the Eagles somewhat dipping their toe and possibly being interested in a quarterback and not interested in Trey Lance at all. I, I, how he would have to worry for his safety. If the Eagles drafted Trey Lance simply because he also went to North Dakota state and there's no way we're going back there. That would be really fucked up. But yeah, I think, I think we have a a quarterback slide and I think it's going to be a Mr. Justin Fields. Here's my other uh, refreshing take, Ryan, and and kind of sticking off of my first refreshing take. Mac Jones will be the rookie of the year. Uh, and here's why: it's, it's easy it's to break less, down. It's less a pro. Mac Jones is awesome, and again, you can get Mac Jones at plus eleven hundred right now to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's less like Mac Jones is awesome, but more I think Mac Jones is gonna end up. In a really good situation. Yeah. Now, if he if he goes to the 49ers and Shanahan, let's be honest, Jimmy G, you really think he's gonna be a day one starter? You just can't unload all these picks. I mean, hell, they had uh who is who is the um who are the other quarterbacks? I'm blanking on the uh, uh who are the other 49ers quarterbacks? It doesn't matter. No, but I, I mean, mean like, like Nick Mullins was like close to starting over Jimmy G. Beat so, hard. I mean, yeah, beat hard. Like, there's these no dudes way. were at least like bringing excitement to the end of games when they're so. Yeah, I mean, I think you know the and, the example that you could use is last year with Herbert and Tyrod. I don't think we thought Herbert was going to be quite the. Well, I was I was high on Herbert. Herbert yeah. and Mac Jones actually quite similar in that they they kind of were guys who. You know, Herbert started higher and kind of fell and became the boring guy. And Mac Jones also kind of the boring guy. Well, and and Mac Jones, I, I think, think it's probably unfair to compare even Mac Jones and Herbert. He, Herbert just a better prospect. But to your point, if whoever lands on the 49ers is going to be set up. Now, granted, wins and losses may be tough, but a lot of talent around there. And no, but I mean, I I think that's the thing. I think. Mac Jones is going to end up on a team. That's going to be pretty decent. Cause what are the Mac Jones destinations besides 49ers, which we think he's probably going to end up could also end up on the Broncos. I mean him on that Broncos team. Like he's to me is an upgrade over drew lock. I I think he can settle the quarterback position a little bit there. Maybe bring some playmaking uh, ability there. I, or maybe he ends up with the new England Patriots if, and again, the saving connection to Belichick they were linked to him very early on in the process. And then he kind of quote unquote skyrocketed up the boards and seemed out of the reach of the Patriots. If Mac Jones goes to the Patriots again, is he better than cam Newton? Hell yeah. You put, you put all this free agent (laughs) talent around him. He just seems like a guy who is going to end up on a team. That's going to go eight and nine, nine and eight, maybe even 10 and seven. Such a weird thing to hear the way that you naturally just spit that out is concerning. Well, and again, I'm fucking I'm keeping a list of people who don't know the 17 game season. And I'm disappointed in the audience. We set out a call to action of shaming these other podcasts. And I know some of you listen to other podcasts. 
So send us in other podcasts messing up the 17 game yeah. season. We're gonna just start roasting them because I've I've already got a couple. Yeah, mainly in my like chamber. Stephen A. Like anytime Stephen A. screws that up, that'd be great. Uh, it's awesome. All right, Kramer, what's your last refreshing take? And by the way, again, it's a prop I gave out, but the Justin Fields one, if you like what I said, you can find over three and a half or four and a half different juice. But I took the over four and a half with the plus juice because the slide will happen. All right. Less about what's going to happen dur- like on the, the quote unquote field for the draft and more about uh, the off the field shenanigans last year, the whole world was trying to figure out zoom. And the fact that they, they got it, they pulled it off uh, without really any hitches was pretty impressive. I mean, they did think it was okay to shoot the whole thing in Roger Goodell's basement. Maybe, <laughs> maybe choose a different Very location, weird. but now these teams, they know we've learned a lot about video conferencing. We've mm. learned a lot about how to do things better, make it look better. The aesthetics of the situation we're going to learn a lot about, you're going to learn a lot about your favorite teams, ability to plan, be prepared, uh, play like a champion. Some might say Joe, Joe Theismann chiming in, <laughs> in the conversation because uh, you know, you, we're in LA of course, and, and we see it, right? We see what happens. The Rams, they're heading to Malibu for the draft where they've rented out a mansion, 9,000 square feet, Sean, the rocket mortgage <laughs> draft house. And the, I see the logos in the pool. It's just, come on guys. It, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's a little bit like, it, like, are the Rams going to set up a Patreon next and start asking <laughs> for five bucks a month from their fans to get a little Sean McVay anyway. So uh, yeah. I'm excited to see what the different teams do. I mean, we remember the Kingsbury and I'll get back to him in a second. Uh, you, you know, Mike Zimmer with the all time goat background, just like animals on the wall mounted. So like, I want to know Belichick's like, dog, Nike making picks. Yeah, he's down in the Bahamas with, you know, with his uh, summer ladies, Jerry Jones on his yacht. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what, like what your favorite team thinks is the appropriate level of like, yeah, Drip That's great. Like, what are, what are they going to show off? Because, and because everyone saw Cliff Kingsbury last yeah, year, yeah, he kind of set the bar. And I think it got again. These are most of these coaches are alphas, and I, I think they real they they're competitive. They want to outdo each other. I think the the Rams doing the Rocket Mortgage House feels like a shot right at Cliff Kingsbury, right? And you know, when asked about this, Cliff said, "Yeah, I really think it's a ploy by McVeigh, of course, his close <laughs> personal friend. At least the, the press release said so, to allow himself the opportunity to take his shirt off again and jump in the pool like he did on Hard Knocks. <laughs> <laughs> Probably sip a little rosé, dip in the ocean, and make some draft picks. Now, while I'd be happy to be able to dip in the ocean and make some draft picks. I've, I've, I've fantasy drafted from the side of the beautiful uh, Mexican ocean mm. done it before. It's nice. Uh, Rose the Atlantic ocean, I, I Pacific, uh, the Pacific Okay. Uh, ba- down uh, near as you want okay. shout out to, uh, to red. Hopefully he's still doing all right. Um, and, and yeah, like I, I think, I think the real shot came with the Rose for, for a grown man. Tell another man, why don't you go sip on some rose? <laughs> I'm gonna read between the lines, and I'm hearing you loud and clear. Uh, so yeah, I, I think um, you know maybe some. I, I'm kind of excited to see what like the 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 the, the manly teams do. Like, what are the? I want to see what the Steelers are up to or the Vikings. Yeah, Tomlinson. Uh, what's Pete Carroll gonna think is the appropriate way mm. to show off the draft? That's a good question. Yeah, we'll see how much they. Pete they Carroll's amp just it got up. a big poster board with like red <laughs> red string t- t- <laughs> together, still trying to track down building so, seven. Some photos of the Pentagon of the of the play not going in. So yeah, I mean it's more of just a thing to look for. I'm very very excited to see the presentation of the draft this year because like they have no excuse. Everyone knows that. Like every my my nine year old can throw up a fucking sick virtual background and make it look like she's anywhere. So what are these guys gonna do? All right, Kramer. My last refreshing take: the Eagles will draft a quarterback, <laughs> not in the first round, but the quarterback will be Kyle Trask out of Florida. Mm. I've been putting together the um, the pieces of this puddle puzzle. One: Howie Roseman loves drafting from his alma mater, Florida. Yep. They haven't drafted an Alabama player in like two years. It's very weird, and there's a good chance they they draft someone in the first round at the 12th spot. Like if they're 
if there's one of the Alabama guys available, either Sertain, uh, Devonta Smith, or Jalen Waddle, they have to draft them. But he, it's so weird they haven't drafted an Alabama player. But he loves drafting uh, Florida guys. Oh. I mean, again, Riley Cooper is actually the <laughs> only receiver in the Howie Roseman era that he re-signed to a second contract. Uh, that's hilarious. Considering that the guys they so. passed. Now Kyle Trask, I think he. I mean, he had a horrible, uh, a horrible bowl game, which really like dropped him off everyone's radar. But I think he's worth taking a shot on in the third round. The Eagles have multiple third round picks, and the former Florida offensive coordinator is now the QB coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. There's just too many connections, and the Eagles say they want to bring in competition for Hertz. Joe Flacco clearly is in that competition. I think I think Kyle Trask makes a lot of sense. They have the extra third round pick. If he's on the board in the third round, I think they take a shot. Now maybe Trask goes late second if someone falls in love with him, but he really had a he had a good year. Uh, I mean again, I, I I was sitting on him to win the Heisman at like 25 to 1 preseason. It was looking pretty good there for a while. Fell apart at the end, but I I think he's worth taking a shot on. I mean, I think there, you know, I, I think there's probably value in that second tier of quarterbacks because of how much so people are clamoring for the first tier. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, I gave out a Kellen Mond prop in terms of I think the third round, you're gonna see a couple, probably at least one team take take a quarterback with one of their compensatory picks, if not their regular pick. So yeah, I, I was actually trying to pull up the uh the odds on that. I think there's a yeah, Kyle Trask, you think third round? Yeah. What's the third round? Plus one twenty five. Okay. Second so that's round is plus two fifty. Fourth round is plus two twenty five. So it does seem like that the odds are saying they're thinking third round. I, I just think the fact that you get an extra twelve picks or whatever it is, like I I know they're they're aware of this, but if as as a, as a Joe Joe Square public, whoever you know, <laughs> be like just literally go to Wikipedia. Well, you know what's really funny is because when you were out of the office earlier today, I was talking with Colby. He's working on his, um, you know, his uh, War and Peace, aka his seven round mock draft that he Colby volunteered to do, <laughs> and then just watching him slowly, slowly, you know, <laughs> dig through it, and he looks up off his laptop, he goes. God damn! There's a lot of picks in the third round because he has to, you know, not to pull back the curtain too far. But we have a Google Sheets template for the mock drafts, and it's one and two rounds. And then once the third round hits, there's all these extra picks that you have to copy and paste and reformat the whole uh, spreadsheet. So he was supposed to talk to you about that, Kramer. So look forward to helping uh, the database sort through all those uh, compensatory picks. All right, we're gonna get to some UFC. Two sixty one. Before we get to that, want to shout out Roman. That's right. Looking for a little lead in your pencil. Looking to get back. Get get your game back. You know, I mean, obviously in sports, you know, you see it all the time. Someone misses a three putt, missing some free throws, clutch spot, just coming up a little bit short. Uh, again, if ED is uh, an issue with you, and again. You can you can convince yourself it's not, but let's it, let's be honest. If you're having an issue, one, it could be a, a you know a serious health issue. And to me, if my erection's not working, that is a serious that's, health issue. That's a big, I'm, big time problem. I'm going to get Roman.com/sgp, and the best part is free online evaluation. I mean, online again. A lot of reason why guys put off getting treatment or talking about it is because you have to go to the doctor. You have to have that conversation, but now you can do it from your laptop, from your Zoom. Makes it way easier. And uh, again, if medication is appropriate, they'll ship it to you free. Two day shipping, straightforward, discreet. All you got to do is go to getroman.com/sgp, complete the online, complete the online visit, and again, take care of your ED without leaving home. It doesn't get any easier than that. Go to getroman.com/sgp to get fifteen dollars off your first month. A straightforward way to take care of your ED. Get Roman.com slash SGP. Get started now to save $15 on your first month of treatment. Joining us <laughs> on the line, the co host of the MMA Gambling Podcast, Jeff, the Arctic Fox. What's happening, Jeff? Uh, I'm the main host, by the way. I'm not a co host. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> The main Dan host. Is, Dan is the associate host. I am the host. <laughs> I come, coming in with the flame throw. Well, By the uh, way, we got to get things straight off the, off the get go. Love the nickname. I think it's the first time I've heard Sean say it. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if I we were joking around in Slack or if we talked about it the last time, but Jeff is from Canada and Arctic Fox is just such a badass. I feel like name. you're applying a stereotype or two there, but it, it is a good well, name. Well, he also they literally <laughs> didn't you just have a blizzard, Jeff? We did. We had a blizzard today and it's what April twenty second. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was uh beautiful. Sean, I had a blizzard a couple of days ago on four twenty. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Different storm front there. <laughs> well, yeah, and of course, if you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure you do it. Uh Jeff a- and uh Gumby do a uh, great MMA gambling podcast called the MMA gambling podcast. It's got I, its I, own I, feed now I climbing do. up the charts and we're having a conversation. It's now top 100 podcast oh. <laughs> yes. in the uh, good old United States in the wrestling category. <laughs> and it's hilarious because you know, Apple, they, they seem to have it all figured out, but they don't have a separate martial arts MMA category. So, I mean, what does it feel like dominating the wrestling charts here? I, I think my parents think I'd do a wrestling podcast anyhow, so this is probably <laughs> fitting, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I feel good actually because that's probably like the most competitive category you could be put in nowadays. Everybody's got a wrestling podcast nowadays, so yeah, it feels it feels great. <laughs> Just the progressive nature of Apple, and for them to not have figured out that there's others sp- like the categories they ha- don't worry they have outdoor covered. They got yeah, outdoor so covered. Odd. But uh, you know, anyway, no, I, I uh, Sean, we were commenting on this earlier, but it might be the sexiest cover art on oh, the network. Yes. The, the logo for the uh, for the MMA gambling podcast, top notch, very uh, very on point. Now, I, I know you guys covered it on your podcast, but worth mentioning here as well. What was the uh, takeaway from the Ben Askren uh, oh, Paul God. fight? I mean, again, someone had a great tweet. They said, "I watched this on an illegal stream, and I still want my money back." I felt like I had the same, <laughs> same feelings. Where it's like, dude. I, I mean, again, I get it. He, uh, he, I, uh, he, what, what? Uh, Money's hundred, green, bro. Five hundred thousand dollars. I would take yeah. five hundred thousand dollars to get knocked out in the ring. And uh, what, what are you? What's your take, Jeff? Well, it it was a. It was just basically more uh, annoyance than anything, um, because there was a real, like, legitimate UFC event that <laughs> night that we were trying to trying to cover, and yeah. the, my feed was just full of like Justin Bieber and like whatever Oscar De La Hoya was on that night, and it was just <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. And but I did get like I got. Um, I got traffic to my MMA site based off of that. I write nothing about Jake Paul, but you know, it, it did bring exposure um, to the sport, whether good or bad, it, it brings the numbers in. So, but yeah, you, um, yeah, Ben Askren never made half a million a fight in the UFC. Well, that's that's the sure. crazy he, part. He was making maybe 50 grand. I think maybe he was making a fight. Yeah, that is crazy. And, and long-term with the sport, do you think, and again, as, as fight fans, the, you know, the issue with boxing was there never was like one commissioner. So you didn't get the fights you wanted, but again, all these different, but they got paid. Yeah. They got paid and all these different hands in the, in the pie ended up creating a big pie and, and whatever, but also kind of maybe led to its downfall in popularity. But now UFC comes in kind of the dominant MMA uh, game. But then again, Dana can really, you know, keep an eye on everyone's money. And again, Player empowerment in his, hasn't hit MMA. Well, yet. but in his defense, UFC does seem bigger than any of these people. Yeah. And and we've had these moments where like UFC has the biggest star and then eventually they get knocked out and then they're just gone. Yeah. And then UFC keeps motoring on. Do you think there's ever going to be a sea change of how UFC and MMA is structured? I don't think unless they're absolutely forced to, whether like through like legal actions, like the alley actor, uh, which I don't know a whole, whole lot about, but I hear talked about a lot. Um, they've tried to fighters have tried to put unions together, but it's, it's never gotten past like talk uh, individualistic sport. Like you don't really have, no one seems to have their back, uh, each other's back in it. They're all out for you know, uh, for themselves, which, you know, short careers and it's an insane thing to do for a living. So you can, you can understand that, but, um, so, uh, unless someone huge like Conor McGregor and all the top people actually bandy together and, and hold the, uh, UFC's feet to the fire, then no, it's not gonna, not gonna change. And, um, yeah, and I don't see ever 
them ever having a union or anything like that. And UFC will keep paying what they pay uh, unless unless they're forced to do otherwise. Well, I mean, Matt, you you want to talk about a population of individuals who are willing to cross picket lines? <laughs> I'd, ima- I'd imagine there's a decent amount in the fight game. Oh so, yeah. yeah, I mean, if if you're willing to just randomly fight Nate Diaz for ten thousand dollars, you're not you're not like up on union politics. You're just, <laughs> you're just a guy who doesn't mind getting punched in the face and, and hate Nate Diaz. Now you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Conor McGregor. What's what's next uh, for McGregor. He's kind of had a weird career here after peaking in the UFC. Well, he's had, uh, he lost his what last fight last time I was on, which was, I think was January. Um, you finally had me back for your, your ratings must be dipping. So you have me back three <laughs> months later, but um, he is fighting the same man again, Dustin Poirier. Um, they're having part three of their fight uh, in July in uh, T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So that is what's next for him in terms of UFC. But you're hearing talk about Jake Paul. It's not a joke. You're hearing eventually that's probably the end game for Jake Paul is to is to box Conor McGregor. And and honestly, Holy it kind of makes sense because Conor McGregor. <laughs> like, hold on or, a second. Sorry, Jake Paul. He hasn't really. He hasn't really boxed anyone who's known as a boxer. Will Mormon no. in our chat had a great line. He goes, Nate Robinson's the best boxer he's <laughs> faced. And I think Jake Paul, I feel is, like, I, I can't tell. Like he seems like a kind of decent boxer, he's but we trying. won't really know until he faces a legit boxer. And maybe, maybe Conor McGregor's the closest he'll get. This is the fucking prequel to I- idiocracy. That's what we're witnessing right now. Jake Paul's <laughs> rise to fame. <laughs> And next thing you know, he's fucking ruling the ruling the country. I mean, it's easy to make fun of him, but he did just come in and knock out Ben Askren, who again isn't a striker, isn't known as a boxer, and kind of a small guy. He had a huge reach it's advantage. This weird like juxtaposition of Jake Paul taking his life seriously and Ben Askren <laughs> just being like, "Give me my half million dollars." Yeah, he he is an Olympic combat athlete who was a champion in two major organizations. So it just um, <laughs> if it was a real fight, he would have mauled him, but. It wasn't a real fight. It was a boxing match. So there you go. That's what happens. All right. We're going to get to the uh, UFC 261 picks real quick. Want to shout out better than Vegas. That's right. Every day on uh, better than Vegas, giving out free daily video picks. Jeff uh, is in the rotation, giving out picks, plugging the MMA gambling podcast, talking UFC, and you can follow our profile there. Sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. And just, uh, yeah, give us a follow uh- there. Our BTV page has a strong beard game. Yes, I'm say I've that. noticed that. We yes. have we have a strong beard. Tons lineup. of tons of beards in there. <laughs> well, now Colby Colby's no longer a team beard. He's, he's uh, shaved it off. Yeah, we'll have to talk to him about that. Yeah, we have a company policy here. <laughs> and then also make sure you check out Riffer. We got some uh, micro podcasts as they're called, under three minutes, dropping uh, doing four of them a week. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Riffer. That's R I F F R. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash riffer. All right. First fight that's jumping out at me that I think's worth hitting on Uriah Hall versus Chris Weidman. What's the, uh, what's the take here? I'm seeing Uriah Hall, a plus one Oh five dog. Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying that number right there. Um, Chris Weidman used to be the middleweight champion many, many years ago. Yeah. He still, he still thinks he has it um, despite being 36 and being knocked out five times in his past seven fights, like flat, like um, flatlined knocked out. So um, once you lose your chin, it doesn't come back. His chin is gone. Uriah Hall is a fearsome striker, a knockout artist. So I'm thinking the line is that way because they think Wyman's just going to wrestle him, which it would be the smart thing to do. Uh, Hall is not very good at defensive wrestling and Wyman is, was a like, Collegiate All American, I believe, in wrestling, but uh, I'm betting on Hall cracking him before land, and Wyman cannot take a shot anymore. But he doesn't seem to realize that he can't take a shot anymore, so he still eats punches. So I think that's a good recipe for for some nice live dog money there. I mean, the the wrestler, the wrestler head, a uh, neck, shoulder is is just ripe for the the like. Oh, I don't. I'm just gonna forget the knockout, not because I I, I want to forget it, but because my brain's not working correctly. <laughs> and I think we've Correct. seen. I think we've seen a number of fighters do this, where they just they go a little bit too long. And Uriah Hall, I think, you're, if remind me of a he was like one of the 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 reality show guys who was really yeah. exciting. Kind of like at the time, it was like, "Ooh, this guy has the potential to be one of those exciting knockout. Like, we'll throw a kick. Not really sure where he's going to come from." 
And yeah, like this, isn't this one of these fights that you, you kind of, you catch the highlight cause everyone's dropping it on Twitter. Cause Chris My- Weidman's arms are as stiff as, as cement, just like pointed up to the, to the sky after he, are always crazy. after he catches like a roundhouse heel to the, the forehead. <laughs> it, it just feels like this isn't going to end. Well, we do love America. Of course, Sean, he is the all American, mm-hmm. but maybe past his prime. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm with you there, Jeff. He it's, is chirping for a title <laughs> shot though. So I, it sounds I know, like he's ridiculous. real, chirping. but I, I think, I think you nailed it though. And again, you're the expert, but I, I always love fading guys where <laughs> there's clearly just an expiration date on fighters, and it's sad exactly. where they get knocked out a couple times and their body just knows like th- I think there's something in the back of their head that go that triggers like, oh hey, if I get punched, I can just turn off and this will be over. I don't have to <laughs> s- put myself through this trauma. I mean, Manny Pacquiao yeah. was a great example. Like once he got knocked out, he was he well, was over. And you see it in UFC too. And there is a certain I mean, I don't want to I don't want to pull back the curtain, but as someone who's been knocked out before and been also choked out before, <laughs> there is a certain feeling. Wait, I don't I feel like I don't know either of those stories. Uh, well, I mean, I played rugby. I knocked out on the field. Okay. Uh choked out. I wanted to know what it felt like, so I had my sister put me in a sleeper hold as a kid. And uh, it, it it's it's kind of a, <laughs> okay. a it, when you come back from it, it's kind of a thrilling feeling. Maybe yeah, he's just hooked, alive. Maybe he's just hooked on that feeling. Refreshing. All right, we got a big as a kid. Sure, as a kid, it happened, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it totally wasn't two years ago. <laughs> wasn't with was it with a belt uh, six months ago to holiday. <laughs> you know, it, it feels so much better, Sean. <laughs> We got a uh, we got a big uh, woman's fight here. Zhang Wheelie or Welly again. I'm horrible with pronunciations. She's a minus two hundred favorite oh. versus Thug Rose. Uh, you can Nama, say Nama, Yun- Nama, Nama Yunus. Nama Yunus. Yes. <sighs> yes. What, what's your what's your handicap on here? You you rocking the favorite Zhang? I am, but I'm not a huge fan of a number that big for this. Yeah. I think this is the the closest title fight that uh, on the card of the three of them. I think this one's probably the closest one, at least on paper. Rose was the champ a few years back. Uh, she lost it to Jessica Andrade, who lost it to, to Whaley Zhang or Zhang Whaley, depending on how, whether you want to Americanize it or not. But um, I, I like Zhang just based on the physicality and, and her striking, but it's, you know, uh, Rose can't be underestimated. She's uh she's a thug after all. Um, <laughs> and she's made, and she's like made this into like better dead than red and uh, Jang's from a communist country. So she's going <laughs> to defeat her and all Yeah. It's got really jingoistic, which is really, uh, really nice to see <laughs> if you could change then we could change bringing out some Rocky, uh, Rocky four vibes. Uh, well, it's uh, again, I, I, I'm going to go with the thug here just cause you're handicapping it as close to even. Yes, and yes. Uh, if it's that close, I'm, I, I'm scared off of the minus 200 Kramer. What are your, what are you, what are your thoughts? I mean, perhaps you could, you could play it another. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I'm not going to lie. Sean didn't do a ton of handicapping on this one. <laughs> well, that's why we have Jeff here. That's why we have Jeff here. But I, I wonder if you, uh, so you're, you're taking a rose. Yeah. Is that what you're I'm going to, I'm going to roll the so, dice. So maybe you take, rose. maybe you take a, a, a something on Rose ending the fight early. Yeah. Is there, if you like the dog, is there a, is there a specific way you think Rose can pull out if the upset she, uh, she, for her to win? Um, well, how would she win Jeff? If she were to win? Okay. Well, she's got, she's only has nine pro wins. She's only fought like 13 times. So she's rather young still um, half of those or five of those more than half of those are via submission. Um, so you would, pick submission if you're going to go with a, uh, a finish here, but, um, Zhang has never been finished. She, she <laughs> lost her, what she lost her pro debut and she's won 21 straight. She's oh never boy. been finished in a fight. Um, oh. so I, I'm thinking all three of the title fights are going to go to a decision, which is going to be just torture. Cause it's going to be it, the night's going to end at like three in the morning on the East coast. It's going to be, it's going to be rough. All right, so I'm gonna take based on Jeff's uh, guidance. I'm gonna take uh, Zhang wins by a unanimous decision, plus two fifty. Oh, okay, that's good. That is uh, see what I'm deep diving over. Yeah, here. if you, if yeah. Uh, yeah, that's probably a little uh, better price than the minus two hundred. All that's right, the nice. big the big fight of the night, Kamaru Usman, a huge minus four fifty favorite versus Jorge. Masvidal. Nice work. What's Sean. your what's your handicap on this uh on this match here? Welterweight championship on the line. Right. They just fought last summer. Um I think uh, yeah, it was on that 
magical mystical fight island that they had in oh yeah uh, Abu, Abu I forgot Dhabi. about yeah. fight so island <laughs> they fought there um Masvidal fought on short notice. That's that was his excuse for getting just destroyed for all five <laughs> rounds. Uh, Usman just mopped the floor with him, and I expect the same thing to happen here. Well, he's had a full camp, but it doesn't doesn't make a dif- difference. Uh, I think Usman's going to wrestle him and basically grind out probably another decision win. Uh, you may want to take him if you want to prop because that number is horrible. Obviously, you don't want to take minus four fifties or whatever it is at this point. Um, if you want to prop. Uh, you may want to take it depending on what hit him via decision probably isn't much better. Uh, Minus Minus one thirty, I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a bit better. Uh, obviously, oh, yeah. I would take, if you're going to pick him to win, I would take that via decision or he's, he's won two of his last three via TKO. So you mm. may want to take him via TKO, which I think is like plus 300 when we recorded our last podcast. Oh, somewhere wow. in that range. Yep. Um, plus, plus 300. Exactly. All right. But Masvidal doesn't, get finished very often. So that's the one negative there. So that's probably why the number is as high as it is. Uh, If you want to bet Masvidal, the only way he would win is via knockout. So if you're going to bet him, you may as well make it an even better number and and take him via knockout because he's not going to wrestle him and win a decision. He's not going to submit him. Like Usman's just way too strong and way too good of a wrestler and way too smart of a fighter for any of that to happen. His only chance is to, you know, lucky shot him with the flying knee or, or something crazy like that. And you see that in the price because Masvidal to win the fight is plus 300 or whatever you said, plus three. What'd you call it out at Sean? Oh, I didn't. I oh. just had Usman. Uh, pl- I'm yeah. seeing between plus 300 plus 350, but him to win inside the distance is only plus 400. Him to win by knockout TKO also only plus 400. Yeah, so yeah, seems like there there's go. no value really. It, it, they, I mean, you juice it up a little bit, but obviously they're all suggesting the same thing that if he wins, he's going to catch him. So maybe if you're a DJ and you want to, you want to, you would really want to profit. Only. Maybe the angle is you you sprinkle a little on uh, Masvidal uh, first and s- finishes in the first, second, or third round. Uh, plus two thousand for the third round, plus fourteen hundred for the first, second, and plus nine hundred for the first. Uh, my my. I, once, wait, it's it's a five round fight, right? Yeah, yeah if, yeah, if it goes rounds, past yeah. that, it's over. But I, I like. I mean, <laughs> it does seem like the minus one thirty on Usman to win by division the, uh, decision is the is the proper way to play this because you can completely absorb that minus four forty and just you know hope he grinds it out again and does something weird doesn't happen. Now, uh, Jeff, what other? I I think the way I would play this is just take the Usman decision, like Jeff was laying out at yeah, minus, minus one thirty. I mean that, that's yep. responsible. Yeah, that's responsible <laughs> handicap. Responsible gambling, guys. Exactly, gamble responsibly. Just take the uh, by, <laughs> by decision there. Any other dogs, upset, props, uh, stuff that we didn't hit on for UFC two sixty one. Yeah, let me see. Dog wise, well, I like your eye hall. Obviously, we already talked yeah. to him. Um, he's okay. a dog. Plus, you know, take him via knockout. Um, I think that's the way he wins that one. So that's going to get you better money. Um, in the prelims, there's a dragon girl. Her nickname is. So that's enough reason right there yeah. to pick her. Uh, Na Liang, I believe, is the name or Liang Na. Her, she's making her debut, but she's looked very good. On apparently, I haven't watched her, but on the uh, regional scene in China. Um, she's way bigger than her, the, the girl she's fighting um, a way better wrestler. I think when we did the podcast, she was at plus plus one sixty eight. So if you want to take her, um, she also is, um, is worth, I, I think, I think that number is getting even higher. Too, yeah. I'm uh, seeing up, the, up to plus plus one eighty right now. Yeah. It might be worth a splash on her, um, but obviously it's her debut. So you really don't know for sure what you're going to get. Um, my lock pick of this week, I was perfect on my locks until last oh. week. I finally Ooh. lost the lock. Yeah. So now the pressure's off though, which is good. So, um, no, but I'm still obviously doing good with my locks. Uh, my locks, Brendan Allen to beat Carl Roberson. Uh, Brendan Allen, he's, he was around minus 155 when I uh, did the show. Um, if you want to make it even better, take him via submission. He's won half his fights via submission, and his opponent has lost all his pro fights of. Uh, all his pro losses have come via submission. So it seems like uh yeah, it oh, seems like, like a prop that. for the taking right there. Sean perked up like he got a black <laughs> yeah. Well and, and and maybe, and again, maybe I'm getting ahead, well, but Brennan Allen decision parlay. Submission. Uh, submission. Submission, parlay, sorry. Right. Submission. Oh, you want to parlay it too. What a degen. <laughs> Parlayed well, with <laughs> Usman decision. Or uh you're, okay, yeah. and, and circling back, Uriah Hall to win that fight by knockout TKO. I'm seeing as high as plus two twenty five. Ooh. So uh yeah that's, maybe that's, sprinkle that's, then that's a nice juice up from the plus one ten or whatever uh he is just to win the fight. 
Awesome. I like it. Well, appreciate you calling in, Jeff. What can uh, what can people expect on the MMA gambling podcast coming up? Well, hopefully uh, the one that will drop Sunday will be me uh, telling Dan how stupid he is because I got <laughs> more picks right than him. That's usually how the podcast goes. Uh, it, he kind of he messed it up for the past what four weeks because he was he actually got in a heater. I did too, but he got in on a super hot heater. So it was um, a company wide heater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was. It's true. Uh, from from the top down. Um, so he he really he wrecked like the whole chemistry of the show and stuff uh, because of that. So ruined the show. Uh, yeah. So last week we both suck last week. So that, that makes it a bit better. So hopefully um, we'll be recapping UFC 261, talking about all the money that we won. And then we'd be obviously looking ahead. There's always uh, another event the next week, which is good for the gens who like betting on people fist fighting, which is, you can't get more degen than that. I was going <laughs> to say like between like the, the, the sports that are just consistent, like I'm starting to see where the degens really lie. Yeah. It's UFC. Well, it's MMA even, even furthermore, it's golf. Right. It's tennis. It's tennis. The, it's these sports that <laughs> never stop. They just never stop providing you an outlet. And uh, we keep providing the content again. Check out the MMA gambling podcast, Apple podcast, Spotify, check out uh, Jeff's picks and writing over at uh, sports gambling podcast.com as well. Subscribe there, drop them a nice uh, rating and review. And of course, drop us a, uh, r- a rating review on Apple podcasts. You get a chance to win some merch on merch Monday. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan mm, one week away, Sean Kramer. Let it ride.